My cabin in the woods had always been a place of solace, a retreat from the painful memories of losing my wife, Emily. It was a cozy, rustic cabin surrounded by towering trees that whispered stories of their own. I used to go there to find comfort, but one fateful night, I discovered that even in the quietest of places, there can be chilling secrets. As I sat on the porch, my gaze fixed on the tranquil lake, I remembered the countless happy moments Emily and I had shared here. It was our special place. We had watched the stars together, roasted marshmallows by the fire, and carved our initials into a tree nearby. The cabin was a sanctuary for our love, a place where we felt truly connected. But Emily's sudden death had shattered my world. The cabin, which was once a haven, had transformed into a haunting reminder of her absence. The days grew lonelier, and I often found myself talking to her photograph, hoping she could hear me from wherever she was. The nights were the worst. I'd lie in bed, staring at the ceiling, missing her warmth beside me. One evening, as I sat by the fireplace, I came across an old photograph of Emily in one of the drawers. She had the most beautiful smile, a smile that could light up even the darkest of days. As I held the photograph, tears welled up in my eyes. I wished I could hear her voice one more time, see her smile again, and feel her presence. That night, after a fitful attempt at sleep, I heard a voice. It was faint, like a distant echo. I sat up in bed, wondering if it was my imagination playing tricks on me. The voice called my name, so softly that I could barely make it out. John! My heart pounded in my chest. Could it be? Was it possible that I was finally losing my mind? I got out of bed and followed the voice, which seemed to be coming from the woods outside. The moon cast eerie shadows, and I found myself venturing into the dark forest, guided only by the memory of Emily's voice. The voice led me to a clearing, where an ancient, overgrown graveyard lay hidden. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw Emily's name etched onto one of the tombstones. My knees went weak, and I dropped to the ground, my mind reeling. It couldn't be true. Emily was supposed to be buried in the city's cemetery. As I stared at the tombstone, the voice grew clearer, and it sounded just like Emily. She spoke of a mistake, of how she had been taken away too soon. Her voice was filled with longing and sorrow and I could no longer deny that it was her. I was hearing my wife's voice, and she was right in front of me, or so it seemed. The night was a blur of emotions, my heart torn between hope and fear. I decided to investigate further, hoping to find some answers. The following day, I visited the city cemetery, and to my shock, Emily's grave was still there. It was impossible for her to be in two places at once. I couldn't understand what was happening. Returning to the cabin, I decided to consult a local historian who knew the area well. He told me that the hidden graveyard in the woods had a grim history. It was a place where restless souls were said to be buried, their deaths unrecorded. I realized that Emily's spirit might be one of those lost souls, and the cabin's proximity to the graveyard had brought her back to me. Days turned into weeks as I tried to communicate with Emily's spirit. I spoke to her in the graveyard, lit candles at her tombstone, and played our favorite songs. It was both a comfort and a torment. I missed her deeply, but I also longed for her to find peace and move on. One night, as I sat by the fireplace, I felt her presence in the cabin. I could hear her soft laughter, just like it used to be. I couldn't see her but I knew she was there, with me. It was a bittersweet moment, and I held on to it, cherishing the feeling of her beside me. But as the days passed, Emily's presence grew stronger, and I could see glimpses of her, a shimmering figure in the dimly lit rooms. She tried to communicate, but her words became more urgent, more desperate. I realized that her spirit was trapped, unable to find peace, and I couldn't bear to see her suffer. I decided to seek help from a paranormal expert, someone who could guide Emily's spirit to where it truly belonged. The expert conducted a seance, and during the session, 
Emily's voice grew stronger. She begged for forgiveness and told me that she had never wanted to return. She wanted me to let her go. With a heavy heart, I agreed. The expert helped her cross over to the afterlife, and as I watched Emily's spirit fade away, I knew that it was the right thing to do. The cabin in the woods was once again peaceful, but my heart carried the weight of saying goodbye to the love of my life. I continued to visit the cabin, where we had shared so many beautiful moments, but it was never the same without her. My cabin in the woods had taught me that love could transcend even the boundaries of life and death, and that sometimes, the greatest act of love is letting go. I had always dreamed of having a little cabin in the woods. It was like my secret hideaway, a place where I could escape from the loud, busy city. And then one day, I found it, the perfect cabin. It was nestled deep in the woods, surrounded by tall, ancient trees that whispered secrets in the wind. The cabin itself was small and cozy, just what I had imagined. I decided to spend a weekend there, to see if this was really the place I had always wanted. The first day was lovely. I woke up to the soft chirping of birds and the gentle rustling of leaves. I sat on the porch, sipping hot coffee and watching the squirrels play. It was everything I had hoped for. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the woods came alive with mysterious sounds. I could hear the distant hooting of owls and the eerie calls of the night creatures. The cabin, while charming in the day, began to feel a little lonely in the dark. I lit a few candles and settled in, convincing myself that the forest was just a little more intimidating at night. On the second night, things started to change. As I lay in bed, I heard faint whispers from outside. At first, I thought it was just the wind, but the whispers grew louder. I strained my ears, trying to make out what they were saying. It was my name. Someone was calling my name. My heart raced, and I pulled the blanket over my head like a child hiding from monsters. I told myself it was my imagination playing tricks on me. I tried to sleep, but the whispers never stopped. It was as if the woods themselves were trying to get inside my cabin to reach me. The third night was worse. I couldn't sleep at all. The whispers had become a constant, haunting chorus. I felt like I was losing my mind. I stumbled to the window and peered out into the darkness. That's when I saw them, dark figures lurking in the trees, just beyond the reach of the porch light. Fear gripped me, and I bolted the cabin door. I thought that would keep whatever was out there at bay, but it didn't. The figures moved closer, their forms shifting and twisting like shadows in the night. I turned on all the lights in the cabin, hoping that would scare them away. Hours passed, and the figures didn't leave. They just stood there, staring at the cabin. My phone had no signal, and I realized I was completely isolated. The whispers never stopped, and the figures never moved. I didn't know what to do. Morning finally arrived, and with the light, the figures faded back into the forest. I was exhausted, terrified, and trapped in that cabin. There was no way I could stay there any longer. I packed my things in a hurry, left the cabin, and never looked back. I don't know what those figures were or why they were tormenting me, but I was certain of one thing. My dream cabin in the woods had turned into a living nightmare. I never returned, and I will never forget those relentless whispers and the dark figures that haunted my nights in the woods. Our family's cabin in the woods was a special place. We had spent countless summers there, making cherished memories by the lake and in the forest. It was our little haven of happiness, until one day we stumbled upon an old journal hidden away in the attic. That's when everything changed. The cabin was a cozy, log cabin nestled on the edge of a serene, glassy lake. Surrounding us were thick woods, filled with towering trees that felt like guardians of our peaceful retreat. It was a place where we could forget about the stress of everyday life and simply enjoy being together. One rainy afternoon, while looking for some old board games in the attic, my younger sister, Lily, discovered a dusty journal tucked away in a corner. 
It had a worn, leather cover, and as I flipped through its pages, I realized that it belonged to someone named Samuel, who had lived in the cabin many years before us. The journal was filled with peculiar entries. Samuel wrote about a hidden ritual deep in the forest, a place he believed could bring unimaginable power and riches. Curiosity got the best of us, and we decided to follow the cryptic instructions Samuel had left behind. What harm could there be in exploring the forest a little more? Following the journal's guidance, we ventured into the woods on a moonlit night, carrying lanterns to light our path. The atmosphere felt charged with a strange energy. As we walked deeper into the forest, we stumbled upon a circle of moss-covered stones arranged in a peculiar pattern, just as the journal had described. With a mix of excitement and trepidation, we followed the instructions to the letter, chanting the words from the journal. Suddenly, the ground trembled, and a swirling vortex of mist began to form within the circle of stones. We watched in awe and fear as the mist grew darker and thicker, and from its depths, shadowy, otherworldly creatures emerged. The air grew icy, and we could feel malevolence in their presence. The creatures were unlike anything we had ever seen. Their eyes glowed with a menacing red light, and their forms seemed to shift and change. Panic washed over us as we realized that the ritual had summoned entities from a nightmarish dimension. As if in unison, the creatures advanced towards us. Our screams pierced the night as we ran for our lives, the lanterns casting eerie shadows that danced along the trees. The woods, once our sanctuary, had transformed into a labyrinth of terror. In the darkness, we separated. My parents shouted for us to find safety, and we scattered in different directions. The creatures pursued us relentlessly. I could hear the blood-curdling screams of my family members echoing through the trees. My heart pounded, and I desperately searched for a place to hide. Exhausted and terrified, I eventually found a thick cluster of bushes and huddled there, praying that the creatures wouldn't discover me. The night seemed endless, filled with strange, haunting sounds and the gut-wrenching knowledge that my family might be lost forever. As dawn broke, the creatures— unable to withstand the growing daylight, retreated into the misty portal they had come from. When the forest fell silent once more, I cautiously ventured out of my hiding place and began the agonizing search for my family. Hours turned into days as I scoured the woods, calling out their names, but there was no sign of them. I was utterly alone and filled with remorse for ever opening that journal. I returned to the cabin, but it no longer felt like the comforting haven we had cherished. It was a place tainted by darkness, a reminder of the terrible mistake we had made. With a heavy heart, I packed my belongings, leaving behind the cabin that was once a source of joy and now a place of sorrow. I made my way back to civilization, determined to find out how to reverse the ritual and, if possible, rescue my family from the nightmarish dimension we had unwittingly unleashed. The journal, the forest, and the horrifying memory of those shadowy creatures would forever haunt my dreams. My family's cabin in the woods had transformed from a place of cherished memories to a portal to a nightmare, and I was determined to make things right.